Greetings, adventurers, and welcome back to my Skyrim modding journey. Uh, today we are mostly going to be installing some stuff real quick just to make sure that Gilda Green in the middle of White Run looks awesome, um, including the very classic uh, Gilda Green regrown from Arthmore. Um, and then, yeah, there's some other stuff here to make like the petals look nicer and to like stay <laughs> in place. First, though, I just want to show off, I've been working on this uh, off camera. Uh, this is a mod that mainly all it does is by itself is change the uh, fast travel multiplier. Um, and then it recommends some mods to help time like pass by faster in general. Because um, the point of like this mod slash guide is to make Skyrim seem like it is roughly the size of Poland. Uh, there's a post, I'll show you, you can come to this mod page and there's a link to uh, the post here. Yeah, just essentially saying Skyrim based on the map could be, no, <laughs> no one has to do anything, but it could be the size of Poland. And so this mod makes it take like, you know, you can see here this key is that is 250 miles and that clearly is like a decent, you know, as the crow flies stretch of Skyrim. Um, as an example, I, I did some, you know, as close to measuring as I could, like between Fall Creek and Riverwood, and it was roughly 150 miles. And then this offers, as an example, I decided to go with the lower number just because it seemed to work out easier. But essentially how it's going to work is when I fast travel, it's going to be roughly 15 miles a day. So going, so fast traveling from Fall Creek to Riverwood would take uh, 10 days. And then I just ran back and forth a couple times with a dynamic weight 2.0, the one that lets me hit Y, and it can increase the and it can increase the time scale just as you're moving around. And I tested it at different time scales. It was about 1400 to 1500, 1200 time scale would still still be fine, which is what it defaults at. Um, but essentially, around there made it so that it took me five in-game days to go between Falkreath and River Run. So yeah, he offers some guidelines for this uh, for the time scales. For some reason, uh, autosave does not have a 120 anymore. It maxes at 60, which isn't a huge deal. So yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm just setting them all to all pass at 60 when I'm out of combat, and having them to set to pass at one time scale when I'm in combat. And I just thought that was it's it's like D and D rules essentially in D and D. You know, combat or time just kind of passes as fast as you need it to generally, but. Uh, <laughs> especially depending on what stage of the game you're in. But then when you're in combat, it's, you know, <laughs> for turn-based, you know, dice-based combat, but it's it's meant to represent real time. So that's what I'm going to do with this. When I'm in combat on the road, that is a real-time event. And then when I'm moving between places on the road, that's when you can use dynamic time to really ramp up the speed. And then all I have to do is hit Y when I enter combat. It's not super, you know, it'd be nice if I could set that up to turn off when I enter combat, like with this mod. Yeah, I would probably get in the habit of like, if I see battle coming, then I'm going to hit Y just before it happens. <laughs> Have to be careful not to, because I, I want it to be like, oh, I entered combat and this battle's happening right here under what, whatever conditions, because I could cheese it and like let it run for another like 10 seconds <laughs> and wait for it to be daytime or something like that. Not that that doesn't really matter. So yeah, that's the basic idea. And then as far as like how that makes sense, because because in real life, you know, villages, like single villages were not days apart. If you were a village, you were likely within an hour or two or three of other villages that were in like the same sphere, essentially. You might be centered around a castle, or around a city, or around a major just village hub, a major thoroughfare. So as far as Skyrim's map, so yeah, rather than thinking of this as like, you know, a very tiny area where like Riverwood is an hour from Whiterun, um, since it's a, you know, a compacted map, think of all of the, like, cities and villages and stuff as hubs. So, you know, Whiterun is a very big city with a castle in it, so, and that's kind of represented by the Alaskers, but essentially that would be the hub, and there, in real life, would be other villages around it. And then, likewise, Riverwood would be its own hub with its own villages around it. And all of the villages within each of these hubs are going to be relatively close to each other, but Whiterun the hub and Riverwood the hub are, you know, like five days apart, five to ten days apart, depending on how you're traveling. And then just for anyone who's nitpicky, <laughs> uh, when I say it takes me five days based on that time to run from Fall Creek to, to Riverwood, I am running straight through. So it is a human being jogging for 24 hours, but I don't personally like camping mods and don't use camping mods. So I'm just, it's just going to represent 
that a human who is traveling fast for a shortish amount of time, you know, less than a week, uh, who is in pretty good shape, can move 30 miles a day. That's still on, on the high end, but it's better than 40, which was the other range for the initial calculation. So yeah, it's going to be like when I use fast travel or when I use carriages, it's going to represent me going like slowly and safely to avoid danger or whatever. Uh, so that represents about 15 miles a day. So going the roughly 150 miles between Fall Creek and Riverwood takes 10 days. Whereas if I were to run that in real time and use dynamic weight to up the scale to 1400, uh, then that takes about five in-game days. Uh, and yeah, that's just the whole justification for making this a a country the size of Poland <laughs> instead of the size of, you know, a, a neighborhood that you can run across. And that's just, you know, I mean, I like the because then when you think of all of these things, you know, when they're because even think like between like a white run and the uh, bandit thing over here, it's no longer, you know, <laughs> a two minute jog away. It's uh, that road. I think that's about. It's at least several days, <laughs> if not more. And that makes a lot more sense that, you know, bandits would not be right right there. At least several days makes it more like <laughs> a pain in the butt for, for someone to theoretically deal with. Yeah, that's the idea of that. Um, and then real quick, block bashing. Um, for my game, which is going to have lots of different types of characters, it'll just be nice because we already have the lock picking skill that's already associated with anyone who's a roguelike character. Uh, with Odin, I have a lock picking magic spell <laughs> um and then this will give warrior characters essentially a way to pick locks and it is uh scaled and balanced so no requirements installed thick and it really does look nice doesn't it uh, i don't know it's a fantasy tree i'll go for the brighter one all right yeah that one down good old gilder green regrown okay yeah and that does require this all right. Should we just go see it real quick? All right. Looks nice. Yeah. I think that just fits way better. That'll be really cool when it is eventually flower. Oh, yes. Let's do that before I forget. See, I haven't even bookmarked it and I keep meaning to. No broken tower. So important. <laughs> yeah. Easy peasy. See, I'm still only up to uh, 61 plugins uh, or, you know, the, the full kind. Still got quite a lot of room. Oh, that's something else. Um, I ended up having to change out a number of the uh, landscape things I did last video. Um, I had to change to the, I, I pretty much, <laughs> I had to get rid of seasonal landscapes altogether. I wish there was a way, because the one grass patch I found, I thought it would change them out. It actually just adds those other grass mods, grasses, like as a, as variety. So it didn't reduce the amount of grass at all. And seasonal landscapes just had too much grass. It had a way to reduce the texture of it, but, um, that's the whole reason why I have cathedral grasses. It's not a uh, deal with that necessarily. So to just have a, a manageable amount of grass for my my system. So I ended up having to get rid of seasonal landscapes and a couple of its things. And since full involved, whatever, since it has some aspen trees and stuff, I just decided to trim this down and get rid of the, the aspen tree add-ons I added as well. So now we've just got Ul involved light, this unique flowers thing the unfrozen patches luckily that one did not <laughs> add new grass i don't like I, I thought from the description it would but it didn't and maybe that's because one of these grass uh, whatever it all ended up working out i went there and it was not overloaded with grass and it all looked nice i guess i'll just show you at least that uh that fall creep is uh working well yeah i can just do my save from yesterday riverwood so you can see i've still got some bigger trees they're not quite as impressive as <laughs> Because, uh, yeah, I had to use the light version, which just replaces the vanilla trees with some other tree variety. Um, you know, there's still, like, more, like, forest clutter and stuff. It, it, it does still help it make look make it look more like a unkept European forest. Uh, but, yeah, now it's more manageable for my, my system. Uh, you can see here I'm at Falkreath, running around. I do get a little bit of dip when I'm, like, moving and I look out towards the, the main map. But it fixes itself pretty fast i'm at about the end of everything that should uh, really cost a lot of performance so i'm hoping this will be a uh, appropriate amount of grass and you know better trees and stuff all right back in white run you can see it's a uh, winter yeah and i haven't done dined load still if you're wondering that's why it's not perfect whoa even has like a wall neat but yeah i guess i'll just show this off on like a, a shorter version so we're at the watchtower here let's see how long with the time ramp turned up it takes to get to uh the stables by the road i probably started at like 6 p.m 6 p.m on the 11th 
uh, 6 p.m. to 8 a.m. So it's 14 hours between here and the uh, city there. And heck, I might even like, you know, because the whole like walk up to a city should also be fast. I might leave it on, you know, until I get into the city. Okay. Well, that might be a little long <laughs> to get from the outside to the inside. Yeah, it was 80. Yeah, it's been oh, half a day <laughs> to turn that off. So, yeah, 11.15 now. And so by default, it's set to 60, which is 60 time scale uh, for everything, which is three times faster than normal. You can see here, just when I unpause and pause, it goes up about a minute a second. So it's 11.15 now down here. Yeah, that probably is, you know, I mean, it took us less than a minute, but it took like 30, 35 minutes to get from the stables to the gate. That seems more realistic. Maybe a little slow still, but I'm not going to be that picky about it. So that just means it, you know, should also be more crowded than this, probably, and there should be, uh, <clears throat> you know, guards checking us and stopping us, all the normal things you would actually need to do to get in and out of a city. So it can account for all of that. Yeah, let's see. 11.33. Let's walk up to the castle. What is this fog effect right now? Crazy. Yeah. From the gates to the castle, like an hour and 45 minutes. See, so yeah, it makes me feel like I might turn it down just a little, like, to, to 50, which is what I, you know, 50 and 60, it's not going to make much of a difference, but... Yeah, I think going for it, especially since I'm adding how much faster uh, time is going to go when I'm traveling between places on the overworld, I think I'm going to reduce it just a little bit. Because that seemed like a little long to get from, like, you know, the stables. Granted, it would all also take more time to, like, check in with guards and whatever. But uh, I think at the very least, trying 50 for all of these would be a little more closer to what I want. All right, well, that's what I'm going to do it for today. Thank you guys very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.